Hello, King Abdullah here. So this video, I aim to talk about uh, the commercial pilot flight test. Uh, of course, all of what I'm about to say, it's in the flight test guide, which is the official document uh, produced by Transport Canada to help you prepare for your commercial flight test. Uh, so I'm going to be sharing my understanding of the commercial flight test and how I prepare for these exams because I haven't taken it yet. At this point, I did uh, complete the requirements, um, the instrument requirements, the written exams, the 300 mile cross country and the time building. And now it's time for the flight test. And I know you know it's divided into two portions. That's the, the oral exams, the oral part of it, where you sit with your examiner and then they ask you questions and see how proficient are you with um, activities surrounding flying. And then you go do the flight portion of it. And this video will be centered on uh, the oral part of the exams. And as you know, that's it's scary to most people because you're going to be evaluated. Now, I'm not going to say judge because <laughs> that puts you off. And it puts most people off because, well, I'm going to be asked a question and I'm going to answer the question and I'm going to be judged. Scary. But not necessarily if you prepare well enough. Uh, the evaluation goes this way. The examiner would be given uh, subjects that they will test you on, which includes the aircraft documents, what makes the plane you're flying legal, the legal activities surrounding your flight, and will test you on um, the weight and balance. Of course, the day prior or the day of, the examiner will give you a route. It could be, hey, you're flying from point A to point B carrying passengers, um, three passengers who are gender X, male and female, with two dogs, stuff like that. They would give you a route and a scenario and ask you to, to plan it, to make a flight plan, basically. So it's up to you to plan this flight using all the available knowledge you've acquired during the time and plan it and come up with solutions to the problems or potential problems that are presented in this scenario. So they will ask you questions on the weight and balance. How are you going to resolve it? Uh, they may ask you a simple question as what define basic empty weight? What is the empty or W of your airplane? Stuff like that. So they will ask you first the legalities of the airplane, uh, the, the, the weight and balance of the airplane. They will ask you questions about flight planning. And this is big, my friend. It's really big because when, you, when you're planning a flight, you're going to make some decisions, big decisions as to Will I have a stop? I'm going on a 200 mile flight. Am I going to have a stop? Or oh, what altitude am I going to be flying uh, at? Is it three, four, five thousand? And why? And uh, okay, how much fuel am I taking along in this trip? How much power setting am I going to be using? So it's more or less like, why did you make the decisions you make? What did you base them on? So the examiner is going to be really curious as to why did you make some choices, some decisions, why did you make them? And it's your job, it's your responsibility to make sure that each of your decisions is backed by, um, 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 it's backed by an appropriate knowledge. Let's say, for instance, uh, the examiner could come up and say, hey, you choose 65% power, 55% power, 45 or even 75% power. Why? And then you could come up saying, well, today I feel like I have a tailwind, and which, which is a good thing because tailwind helps you get there, right? Faster. I have a tailwind. If I was having a headwind in that case, I'll probably opt for a higher power setting. But in this case that I have a tailwind, which is very good, means that I will get there faster. So instead of 75% power, I elect for 65% power. And the tailwind of 20 knots, it's going to increase my speed, my ground speed. And as a result, I'm going to get there the same time as if I had used 75% power with a 20 knot headwind. That's just an example, may not necessarily be accurate, but it's a representation of what I'm trying to explain. Uh, so more or less, um, they will ask the question as such. And you're supposed to prepare. Now, how do you go about the preparation? Most people I talk to because, you know, because I am in this phase, I ask a lot of questions. Hey, what what's your recommendation? What should I study? What should I be prepared for? Can you ask me a question that may be asked of me during these oral exams? And one thing that was common, the common factor among everyone was this. You know, you got to master your pilot operating handbook. You got to know it from the first page to the last if you can, but it's it's a must. You, you have to know what is in this book. It's just like saying, well, I'm a Christian or I'm a Muslim. Okay, what's your guiding principle? 
how do I know more about this? Well, here is the Quran or here is the Bible. So for flying as well, whatever plane you have, you've got to take your aircraft flight manual or your pilot operating handbook and know it very well. Because in this contains the general descriptions of your airplane, um, the problems, associated problems that might potentially happen to the plane and how you can resolve this problem. It also explains the performance of the airplane in different configurations, the weight and balance of the airplane, and basically the description of the systems of the airplane. So going through this from page to page and being able to reference it is key. Like for instance, they could say, well, um, so here's a question. You're flying on this particular day and you have electrical failure. What are you going to do? Oh, well, electrical failure. Hmm, that's interesting. And you come up with a solution. Now the examiner may let it go or may say, okay, where do you find this possible solution that you are giving me? And you open the book, Direct 77, the electrical system is this. And the book is saying, if I face this kind of problem, this is how I'm supposed to troubleshoot it. But as we know, like flying, like everything in life, you, they can't possibly generate all possible problems that can happen to you. So that's where pilot decision making becomes really handy. You could also be asked questions such as, hey, can you describe the airplane fuel system or the electrical system or the vacuum system, the landing gear system? It could be, uh, you know, everything surrounding your activities. It could be about flight planning. So you're going on this flight. Can you tell me about the weather? And there your knowledge of um, the ground school or the written exams, your preparation and every material you will have learned will come into action. You start explaining about, well, today we have a cold front coming in. And as you can see in the upper winds, the winds are veering and increasing. As you can see, pressure is steadily increasing as the front is moving. You will be asked some of these questions and you're supposed to know. And it could be like, okay, what are the notams today? Is there anything in the notams that's going to affect our flight? Then you quickly pull up the notams and said, well, I've gone through the notams and the puppy of runway 13 of my destination airport, it's not working today. So I know that in, in case I'm flying night in there, it could be about your CFS. Okay, so what kind of airport is this? Is it a control or uncontrolled airport? What kind of lighting system do they have? What kind of services are available in this airplane? And when I can I find this? Let's say you're flying somewhere point K and you wish to revise your flight plan. How are you going to call the flight service station closest to you? How are you going to do that? What frequency are you going to use? Show me how you get this information. That's basically about the written, uh, the, the, the oral part of the examination. For most examiners, they will you know, scratch the surface and see if there are gaps in between. And that's why at my flight school day, over prepare you for this thing you know you do we will do lots of ground you will do lots of study because they want to make sure that you're successful i mean it can be quite frustrating sometimes but it's all geared to help you so it goes this way if you do your homework very well the part is going to be really easy make sure you go over this material and it's not more or it's not only about reading through the material you know you have to learn to express this information you know be able to explain the information uh, to, to someone who knows nothing about aviation and just try to say well this kind of explanation would someone who knows very little about this understand what I am saying so some examiners will just scratch the surface and if everything is intact they let you go others will just do it by the box they will go after each and every slide and ask a question to see whether it's all intact but your best bet is making sure that you're familiar with your pilot operating handbook take your CFS your Canadian flight supplement Go through the CFS and the airports that you ask, check the services, the lighting system, the communication. And if you can, even call the operator of the airport and say, hey, I intend flying in. Can you tell me the entry procedures or the common issues? Ask them questions. Is that feel? How, what's the condition of the runway? Just to back the information that you have from the CFS. I remember when I was doing my 300 nautical mile uh, cross-country flight. You know, personally, if you had asked me previously, I thought, well, if it is in the CFS, then it is like that, it's as accurate. Now, my surprise was when I started making phone calls to some of these operators and I have security guys picking up the calls to answer my question, that, um, well, you got to call some other day. Or I called the operator and it goes to the voicemail. And of course, I did get um, feedback three days later. So you can't afford to just take the information as it is. You have to verify some of this information. Call the operator. What are the conditions of your runway? Is there fuel? How much? You know, some of those. Is there an AMO? If I potentially have a problem like this, can it be solved at that airport? you got to ask some of these questions because your examiner might want to know whether you really did your homework, right? 
And besides the POH and the CFS, you want to know as well airspaces. Oh man, I can't overstress the importance of airspaces and their requirements. When I talk about requirements, equipment requirements and weather requirements, you're going to be asked some of these things. You're flying from point A to point B. Walk me through the airspaces you're going to go through at your different altitudes as you cruise. So you've got to be able to know this is class A, B, C, D and the equipment requirements and the weather requirements of these airspaces as well. And be able to reference it as well. You may be asked, well, okay, class D airspace, you need to establish two-way radio communication. Where did you get this information from? I said, oh, I looked it up in the aeronautical information manual in the AIMS. Okay, good enough. So airspaces, I can't overstress it. In fact, I was watching a YouTube video recently where a gentleman was asked, you know, at this point, he A here in the map, walk me through what airspace we will be from the ground all the way to 90,000. Now, that was really 90,000 feet. That was crazy. But still, it's not supposed to be difficult if you've done your homework. So you really need knowledge of airspace. And you could even back it with the um, designated airspace handbook, uh, DAH, to check, hey, airport X, go to DAH and find out what airspace is, um, the, this, what kind of airspace is my airport at, and the transition area, and know some of these things. You know, the interesting thing is, all the information you're going to be asked is already there. All you need to do is find it and or know where to find it. That is going to be key. Good. Now, if you're able to explain the systems and then describe the performance of your airplane, talk about the weight and balance of the airplane and the documents of the airplane surrounding the registration certificate, the, 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 the registration certificate, the airworthiness certificate, the insurance and your own licenses. If you're able to answer these questions just fine and comfortably, that sets you up really well. And of course, they will ask you problems. Uh, um, they will ask you uh, curveball sometimes to see, you know, how is your pilot decision making? Because it's mostly easy to answer questions when they are just by the book. Sometimes they may throw a curveball at you and say, hey, you were going in this airport X and uh, you inadvertently, in fact, I was asked this question. I didn't answer it right at the time. I was just going through the motion. Said you were flying into airport X and as you go, your flap operating speed is 85 for 20 degree flaps. 85 knots, then you can do charge flaps. You can put it down for 20. Uh, but you inadvertently put a 20 while your airspeed was at 95. What are you going to do? Now, I was baffled because, well, I know and I've been doing all along 85 flaps 20. Well, to start with one below 110 flaps, then below 85 flaps 20 for the 172S. But this time around, I was asked a question outside that. What if the opposite happens? You inadvertently bring down the flaps 20 while the airspeed was above the flap operating range. What are you going to do? I was like, okay, that's interesting. Let me think about it. Now, good. Sometimes they will assess, they will throw questions like this at you to see what is your pilot decision making? How are you going to react if a problem outside the book happens? Now, remember, gentlemen and ladies, safety never takes holiday, ever. It's Christmas for everyone. Even my flight school closes on Christmas and I think everywhere except in Muslim countries, my country, the Gambia, I think we'll go through it. But Safety never takes a holiday. So if you're faced with a question, whether it's a curveball or any other question, think safe first. You know, what is the safest thing to do right here? Good, that's the first question. Number two is, well, is it legal? You know, it's safe, yes, okay, is it legal? Well, may not be, well, that's the second step. Now you can ask yourself, as well, am I comfortable with this? Am I comfortable? Let's say you're planning a flight from point A to point B and the weather is kind of marginal, right? Or oh, well, at least it's VFR from way from your point origination up to 50 miles in. But for that, it's marginal. It's just 50-50. VFR and spicy says no VFR and it's just, you know, unstable weather. What are you going to do? Are you going to go on this flight? You got to ask yourself, is it the safest thing to do? Well, yes, I think it's safe. Yeah, well, it's VFR and if the weather is marginal or below VFR, I could just land at another airport short of where the weather is not good. Okay, is it legal? That's the next question. Well, in my flight plan, I'm not going to, I'm going to say I'm planning from point A to point B, but somewhere in between the weather is below VFR and you're a VFR pilot. So you got to ask yourself again, is this legal? And apart from that, you got to ask, am I comfortable doing this? Because sometimes there is this pressure of friends or pressure to get things done that you want to do things in a very short time or you want to push through. Now, the problem about it, if you do that and find yourself in an accident, it's not going to happen a second time. Some of these things, they happen only once. And you don't want them to happen to you because it's going to be on your record. So, that's basically um, 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 a tip.
of the iceberg about the oral exams and I'm going to share everything that I'm doing to share with you what I did is and I'll put us another video on how my preparation is going. I get some files. Look at this one. I just put Abdulli um, CPL flight test script, a binder. And what I do, I just find my binder, put my aircraft documentation there, my weather package, highlight them, just to be prepared. And as you go through this information, to know what you're dealing with, right? My systems go through notes, you know, make a note of the systems of the airplane, just to help trigger your memory when you ask some of these questions. Of course, you need to be ready to answer the questions because you will be asked. And if you don't know where the answer is, know how to find it. That is key, my friends. Thank you. And we'll be back for the second video where I will go into details of how the oral exams is going to go. And you also use the fighter's guide to marry the two and help you have a better understanding. Till then, like, subscribe, and thank you.